these gates are designed so that we can pull a truck through here so we can easily clean out these stalls. So this is the goat's main winter stall. We use the deep bedding system in here over the winter, which means we put a lot of straw in here. Probably up to 20 bales, maybe more. There's about a good six to eight inches of straw on the floor of this stall, and it's layered with urine and goat droppings. It's about six inches deep in there. Now that the spring has come and summer is coming, it's time to clean this out. We don't really need the deep bedding anymore. In the winter, deep bedding is a perfect system because all of the um, nitrogen in the goat's droppings and then their urine gets absorbed and gets bound up in the carbon in the straw and it begins to break down. Not only does this keep your barn smelling fresh, you don't have a nasty high nitrogen mess of poop and wet urine, but it also actually keeps your barn warm, keeps your animals warm in the winter as it starts to break down slowly and it also keeps your animals healthy because they always have dry bedding underneath. When you're buying all that straw, it can seem kind of like a waste. But this right here is where we really recoup what you might consider losses. So I'm taking all this bedding, I'm throwing it on this compost pile near our garden. There's a mix of leaves and stuff in there. What we're doing is actually recovering any losses from feed. We're also um, converting the forage from the pasture into usable energy in our garden by composting everything. This is just the neatest thing about deep bedding. It's perfect for composting. I'm giving the chickens a few forkfuls of this stuff to keep them entertained and give them some work to do. Okay chickens, you got 10 minutes. Spread it all out and eat anything good in there. You don't really have to tell them though, do you? It's in their nature. Going down to get another load. When you're looking for material for deep bedding, you want to look at something that is very available, pretty cheap, highly absorbent, easily compostable, has carries a lot of air when you put it in a pile, and the other factor high in carbon. And straw and sawdust really score really high on all these counts. Sawdust might be cheaper. Wood shavings also would work. Wood chips tend to be very high in carbon but not absorbent, and they tend to get packed down from what I've read if you use them in an application like this. You could even use shredded newspaper as they tend to be less and less toxic these days. get this last load of straw and manure up to the barn. Here's one really fun thing about making a compost pile. 
when you have chickens, you can let the chickens run all over the pile and they love you for it. Now once all this material is made into a pile, the magic really starts to happen. There's something about that three by three by three size or larger where the community of bacteria and microorganisms really activates. If you want to make a lot of friends, have a lot of friends on your side fast, the fastest way is a compost pile. You'll have billions and billions of friendly bacteria who are going to help you out in the garden. That was another great day in the homestead. Thank you very much for sticking with us, watching our videos. We hope you enjoy them every day, and we'll see you tomorrow.